Hey everyone, welcome back to Skill Link. This is Josh and Logan as per usual, and today is a special episode because we have our first returning guest, and that's our man Nico with Nico Gaming. How you doing? Good. How are you guys? We're doing we're doing great, man. And you're 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 fresh off of a off of a professional regional appearance. Want to tell us a bit more about that? Uh, yeah. So I went out to Indy, uh, Indianapolis Regional Championships. It was a good time. It was a good time. Uh, I did not make the second day of the tournament. I went four and three, and I just decided to drop. But my buddy, who I met at a local here uh, around me, went out. It was his first regional, and you know we did a lot of practice sets together. And he's like, I need nice. help with you know certain team. Let me prep. And so we played like tons of practice sets together we were playing in like online tournaments together uh like multiple mm -hmm. times throughout the week together and prepping and he actually he missed day two by one match he lost his no last way. game of the day and he was like i was like dude you killed it i was like going to your first regional and getting you know positive record let alone almost day two and i was yeah. like that's pretty that's pretty awesome that's pretty impressive so we had a really good time was this was this your first regional as well or if you this you was my second i went to uh fort wayne last year okay. and then i finally got around to going again this year here to uh indianapolis and they're so fun it's just such a good time all those people around even the you know the even the people that aren't there for VGC, like the Pokemon Go players, the TCG people, like just everybody around that just loves Pokemon to the same level. It's just such a good space, man. Dude, I need to make my way out to one. Yeah, like you said, just the overall vibe of everyone just having a good time. And yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, there are actually people out there that like this as much as I do. And yeah, it's super <laughs> yeah. cool. You know, walking around, checking out all the vendors that they have in, you know, For they sure. get all the, the plushes and stuff. It's it's a good time. I'm curious. Um, so what team what team did you end up using? And like, how did you decide on, on those bonds? And like, just kind of how what, what was the process going into that? So originally I was looking at uh, Calyrex Ice Rider because, you know, we got the legendary Pokemon in the new format. And I was really, really into Calyrex Ice Rider early format. I was like killing it with Ice Rider. And then I was like, man, I kind of suck at Trick Room. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> so then my buddy who I was talking about needed help with the Shadow Rider matchup. He's like, I know you've been messing around with a bunch of different teams. He's like, I figure you probably got a team built, you know, on Showdown that we can practice with. He's like, you run some Shadow Rider matches against me. So it's like a balanced Shadow Rider team. The actual team I took was Shadow Rider, Raging Bolt, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Urshifu, Rapid Strike, and Amoongus. Uh, made some tweaks. I landed on Raging Bolt because I was having issues with the Kyogre matchup and Raging Bolt was just beautiful into that, which is great because actually I faced like three Kyogres at the event and okay. I, I had it locked. Like it was, it, I just had the matchup down like the back of my hand and it, it was awesome. If I if I could have played Kyogres the rest of the day, I think I would have made day two, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had some good uh, practice against it. Yeah. That's hilarious, um, dude. So yeah, I ended up taking Shadow Rider, which was not the meta call. Uh, it actually did worse than I was hoping for, but it was still a fun team, fun team to play. I had a great time going, so. I'm seeing on here that it looks like uh, Incineroar quickly made its way back to the top as king in oh, official tournaments. Yeah. On six, <laughs> yeah. 688 of teams. I'm seeing that on our on our friend Lab Mouse's site here. Raging Bull was, was also a popular pick. And then um, Rillaboom. It's just kind of fun to see, like, how the, the meta almost has to readjust to, like, back yeah. to, to old yep. styles tried and true kind of methods and sometimes that's fun because you could really see like skill like a lot of skill kind of come through there because people are, are going back to what they know and it's mm -hmm. kind of like okay who's who's playing this team or these bonds the best out there so it's a lot of fun other reason i want to bring you on so logan and i are part of a draft league that we've been doing with some of our friends for uh, how many years now like I think it's like five years technically, but we're like yeah, in the seventh almost, season of almost. it. And every season we'll do a different format and a different generation. So like, you know, we did like gen five singles. We did a monotype season just to like make it super casual. Like I know some like draft leagues out there have like really rigid and established traditional formats and rules and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty, you know, again, it's pretty casual, but oh, yeah, yeah. we've, uh, over the years we've, we, you know, we've added some more guys on. It's gotten a little more, uh, competitive and bigger. How many do we have this, this season, Logan, like 12 guys or something like that? Yeah, like it's not a ton, but it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, we did one double season previously, it was a couple of seasons ago, and now we're doing it again. So we're like, hey, let's take a look at the teams that we drafted. So there's a massive pool of Pokemon, and the way we do it to kind of balance out the general structure of the team is we just go off of some pretty general viability rankings. So you get a roster of ten. Of those ten, you get two Ubers, three OU, three UU, and then two RUNU Pokemon. And of course, for you know your actual fight, you only bring it's not VGC. It's it's just six v six yeah, doubles. Yeah. And then for any fight, you the general structure is one Uber, two OU, two UU, and then one RUNU. Of course, you can also kind of play around with that. Like if you don't want to bring your Uber, 
like you said, if, if you kind of like what's on the lower tiers, you can bring three OU and then the yeah. rest the same, or you can bring one OU and then like stack up on the bottom. So kind of how you want to do that, but that's the general. Mm-hmm. So what we'll do is um, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of share our teams and then we'll go into some like fun analysis. You tell us what you like, what might synergize well, what might not <laughs> synergize well. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's funny, as I was drafting, I had an idea going into it of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to build. And we did a snake draft. And so I had the last pick in the round. So I could go back to back. So I could knock out two that I wanted. But then I wouldn't draft again for like 25 picks. I kind of built (laughs) what I wanted as far as my strategy goes. And then I wouldn't, you know, my name wouldn't be called for like another half an hour. And then by the time (laughs) it was my turn again, I was like, well, shoot, there goes what I wanted to do. But it it makes it fun. So So last night, you know, we were kind of chatting over Discord and stuff like that. And you said you were cooking. I was curious, did you have like some (laughs) initially kind of seeing what we what we had, what we drafted, like any any initial thoughts, any initial, you know, insight? So I've got some stuff here if you guys want to go over the lists first i've got ideas (laughs) okay cool share our teams first and then we'll go for it but here's the here's the first six of logan's team so logan if you want to read your yours off i'll let you go for it yeah for sure so my two ubers we got um kieran black uh and then uh, these are just like just the show so the terror types aren't solidified or anything like that we can always change those between mm-hmm. fight between matches and things like that but then we have um iron bundle as my second uber as well then we have uh for my first ou we have hatterene and then uh we got uh hisui and samurai we're looking to get some of those shenanigans up with spikes and and also really good uh dark water type that can that can play around and then uh, this is what i'm really excited about is heatran i've never used heatran before it fit really well with kind of some protecting some of my ubers um with the flash fire and being just a fire steel type um and then just so everybody knows this is a nat dex uh gen 9 um draft so it's gen 9 mechanics but we're still using <laughs> we're able to use mega megas and terras and z crystals and so we got mega venusaur with thick fat um and then i believe after that we got mew which which is my can do anything guy. I can make him whatever I need him to be. I'm excited to, I've never used Mew before either. So that'll be kind of fun. Rotom Wash is going to be a blast. And this is my perfect, my first pick. Are you, I didn't know what, how it was this low, um, but it was a Lowland Ninetales. So this is actually a nod to you, my friend. I, I had seen <laughs> your uh, Kieran Black. Uh, it might have been Kieran Black or Kieran White video. You might have done both. I can't remember. Kieran White. Um, white, White. So I saw, but I saw your Kieran video and I was like, I think I want to go as I was thinking about this being doubles. And I was like, I'm not going to stress myself out too much. I saw Nico pull out some fun stuff with Kieran and the ice and stuff like that. And so a little nine tails, my first pick, I was happy with getting that. Um, and then lastly, I got Cyclazar for some uh, shed tail shenanigans. Dude, you took, you, we were drafting, you took a couple of guys that I wanted. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so then here's my team. I grabbed uh, Deoxys Attack, immediate wall breaking potential. Walking Wake, just goaded. I don't even need to say anything else about Walking Wake. Well, yeah. what was kind of fun about that is that I, I was initially thinking of like doing a rain team or playing around rain a lot. Cause I, I had like Archulodon on my list, obviously Pelipper. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. I, I'll grab Walking Wake because then I can also pivot and do sun stuff with it being a, being a paradox pass Pokemon. And sure enough, Pelipper and Archulodon got taken. Well, Pelipper got taken like pretty high, I want to say. I think in the first like, like 30, 40 picks or something like that before I could get to it. So grab me Ascarada, had a soft spot for me Ascarada because last season, uh, so it strong, was singles. Uh, I made the finals, and Meowskarada was like my best Pokemon, so I kind of <laughs> had to br- bring it back. Grab Zamazenta. This is um, just the base form. I still wanted to bring it because Zamazenta's dope. And again, shouting you out, your Zamazenta video from a little bit back where you were rocking it and it was doing some uh, some damage with body press, uh, iron defense, and stuff like that. Thunder Therian. Grabbed Iron Hands. And uh, Mega Sableye for one of my Megas. Chansey for EV Light stuff. Uh, Tornadus Incarnate. And then um, Galarian Weezing. There we go, man. That's, that's what we brought to the table. <laughs> we shot these over to Nico the other day, and we're like, man, just just cook, rip, rip it apart, build it up, whatever you want to do. The idea is for those watching at home, you can kind of take some of these general team building principles, whether you are in a draft league, whether you're just trying to construct <clears> something <throat> to ladder with on showdown, or whether you are prepping for a regional and you're like, hey, how do I want to build a team? Regardless of how wonky the format is, whether it's something like this or something a little more professional and structured, you can take from these general team building principles and try and put something together. Because I know that team building and battling are definitely two very different skill sets. Yeah. So this kind of leans into that and how to, how to identify certain synergies and be aware of a of uh, a lot of stuff that you can do so do we want to do like one at a time one person at a time we want to go back and forth how you how you guys want to handle this Oof. let's go back and forth i'm curious yeah that okay let's bounce kind of we see get some variety in there too and 
Yeah, so uh, I'll pull up the just the full roster for each person on my cool. end. So, like I was saying before we started, before you hit record, I was like, normally I've got like 600 Pokemon to look at and like pick and <laughs> choose, you know, which ones I want. I had 10 and I was like, man, I have limitations as well. I can't bring X number. <laughs> but the way you guys have it structured, like some of these Pokemon, like uh, who had Tornadus? Oh, here it is on Josh's lineup. Yeah, mine. Yep. I was like this is RU. I was like, this Pokemon's goaded in VGC. Like I was I, uh, like, this is a seal of a Pokemon. That was one so, of my first ones. And when I saw it was that low tiered, I'm like, dude, prankster tailwind. And the thing is the pool is so big that I think people kind of come with their strategy and they can yeah, kind of yeah. overlook some other stuff. So when it was my turn, I was like, that my dude, I'm grabbing that for sure. Anyways. Yeah. yeah for so sure. this, uh, with Logan's roster, uh, immediately I was looking and we got a lot of fun ice stuff. Like we were saying with the nine tails, mm -hmm. Uh, so my brain immediately went to like trying to pair this with either Chiron Black or with a uh, bundle, just swap either mm -hmm. out. Um, and that's kind of where my team building went. Uh, when we get into that, I'll talk about that. You got a nice options with Firewater Grass Core because you do have Heatran, you do have Venusaur, you've got the uh, Rotom or the Bundle, depending on the team. Also, Samurott as an option. So good Firewater Grass Core. Uh, Mew's a cool one because you have you can learn like every freaking move in the game so like you can use it yeah. whatever you want to do like and uh, i came up with something really spicy from you just because it Ooh. like you had some weird stuff and some weird speed tiers here uh so i did come <laughs> up with something a little uh little kooky from you but i think it'll be fun i don't know though i think that uh josh has some pretty pretty good stuff here uh so like he was saying with the rain stuff i mean you got tornadoes so you can you can go rain you can go sun you can do whatever you want this thing is probably going to be on every variation of the team i can imagine uh yeah. walking wakes awesome uh because you could uh, either in rain or sun it doesn't care what weather's on the field it's gonna do big exactly. damage i like that a lot thunderous is actually one of the picks i was most excited about seeing because it is really really good i played a thunderous team not long ago and it was so fun uh, so that nice. one I automatically jumped to when I built one of the variations of the team. I think that there's uh, some potential with Zamazenta. Actually, even though it's not the crown variation, I, I think right. there's some fun stuff to be done here with Zamazenta. Uh, Meowskarada excites me. I like Meowskarada. I'm, I'm sad yeah, it fell off after the first format of Scarlet and Violet for us VGC folks. It, it just yeah. disappeared. It's such a good Pokemon. Now, the, the Chansey... Ha! Huh. <laughs> I don't know. What, Dude, I, don't I, know what, I, I know, man. I know. I was racking my brain uh, when I was messing with the Pokemon last night. I was like, "What am I gonna do with Chansey?" But still, pretty cool. Iron Hands just just good. So th there's some good stuff on both ends. I I'm not cool. sure about Deoxys. It's so frail. I know. Uh, it's so frail. It's so frail. Uh, that was the one thing. I mean, it's really fast. So there's that. We could probably choice scarf it or something fun. But all right. So I can show the first team idea I came up with. This one's one of Josh's. So this one is a Sun variation that I've got going on Ooh. here uh, with the walking wake, obviously being the center point of the team. The EV spreads are just some random stuff I threw together just mm -hmm. off the top of my head. Uh, this one is rocking the life orb with Terra fire. So that way we can benefit from having flamethrower in the sun. For sure. uh, we, we also get away from the fairy weakness. That's pretty nice. Um, Hydra steam, obviously just got to have it. If they set rain, it still does a ton of damage. If you're in the sun, it still does a ton of damage fantastic and then if you just need to nuke something draco meteors there for that and then protect obviously because we're playing doubles you i got always, you always need that yeah always yeah i got the tornadoes here focus sash prankster obviously uh tailwind sunny day taunt and bleak wind storm uh bleak Ooh. wind's just so nice bleak wind is just so fantastic good, spread damage even with the the chance to miss it's just so good sunny day to control the weather uh if they bring in I don't know what else is drafted in this league, but if they have a rain setter of their own, you can just reset it with Sunny Day, which is super nice. For sure. Terra Ghost, so that way we don't have to run Covert Cloak on this guy. We can uh, just maximize our damage with Bleak Wind and then get something else in. I figured it wasn't necessary to hold on to Tornadus as long since it's a 6v6 uh, instead of a 4v4, like in VGC. Right. Yeah. So if we get something more powerful on the field after we, you know, destroy some stuff with uh, Walking Wake, that'd be ideal. Oh, Iron Hands, pretty standard. Assault Vest stuff, uh, Fake Out, right. Wild Charge, Drain Punch, Volt Switch, uh, Terra Grass, just to avoid any uh, shenanigans if, you know, there's uh, Sleep Powder, Spore, whatever the case may be. Uh, also resist the ground weakness, ground which resist. is really nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Stabilize where I got uh, a little interesting here. Uh, I'm excited for this. <laughs> I, so I was thinking, I was like, you know, what if we don't want to immediately lead with the, uh, you know, the Walking Wake Tornado stuff? I was like, what if we wanted to, like, try and get set up around Zamazenta? So I was like, what if we led Sableye Zamazenta while we we're you know, not mega we have Prankster. Mm -hmm. So we can get light screen up, we can get Thunder Waves down, we can foul play some stuff, fake out, you know, allow Zamazenta to start setting those iron defenses. 
like turn one fake out something Ooh. iron defense up next turn you can light screen and now you're not only bulky defensively but also specially defensively and then you can just start slowing stuff down with thunder wave as people start making rotations you can start chipping away at stuff um, right. Just allowing uh, Zambazenta to do its thing. Uh, I thought that was going to be pretty solid, at least as a use case. And then if you know you needed to avoid a spore or some sort of effect on uh, Sableye, you could go ahead and mega it then. Uh, so then Zambazenta just doing Zambazenta stuff. You got Iron Defense, Body Press, Iron Head, and then Protect right. with Lefties. I have Terra Grass on this. I think that uh, Terra Fire is definitely an option because I think the worst thing that can happen to Zambazenta is it gets burnt mm. because it's still lowering that attack off your Body Press. So that makes things a little interesting for you. Uh, so I, I terrifier is definitely an option in that regard. And then as far as the wheezing went on this one, I did have clear smog in case anybody tries to set up on you. Uh, you're able to okay, reset cool. the stats. Uh, I have misty surge instead of neutralizing gas. I thought okay. that was interesting, mainly as an, uh, option to stop the burn. Like I was saying, yeah, uh, yeah. stop the burn, stop the sleep, do that kind of thing. And then just let this thing do a little bit of extra damage, uh, with flamethrower and, dazzling gleam here with the citrus berry keep it out in the field let it be annoying and bulky and just kind of do that, that kind of thing with it that's fun i love that dude oh that's that's super cool i love i love seeing like because like i didn't even think of clear smog um and uh and that's like such a, like it's such a niche thing to have on there but it's like it, it's gonna come in handy like right in the moment when you need it this is cool i like i like kind of the, the general idea with having the 10 is that what we've noticed over seasons past is that you know, you, you have a ton of options and obviously you can configure those 10 into six slots and, uh, you know, a ton of different ways. But yeah, as you kind of figure out what works by the end of the season, aside from like some minor variations, you kind of find what works for you and your core that has the most synergy and that does the yeah. most damage of what your, your play style is. And then you kind of stick with that. <clears throat> so I, I kind of like with the, I kind of like this where you like you have hey, for those listening, you know, you have a core strategy that you want to build around, but then you have a couple like small variations that you can play off of that, like for, you know, like tornadoes, if I want to lean into sun more, if I want to lean into into rain more, or you know, if I want to lead with Sableye and Zamazenta, or do you want to lead with Wake and and, and tornadoes and, and set up in that regard? So having an idea of what you want to do, but still kind of leaving a little bit of the door open for some variation that doesn't alter your strategy too much as a whole feels like it's it feels like a really good really good move to to lean into. So nice. Right. Let's see what let's see what we got. All right, for Logan's team number one, I've got the Iron Bundle as the Uber pick choice specs we're maxing the damage we're terra ice <laughs> we're doing as much as we can next to that alola nine tails um just doing crazy damage here with our blizzard spam uh freeze drying hydro pumper yeah. there if you need to get out right away if something goes wrong they change the weather on you whatever flip turn is there because this thing is stupid fast so yeah. having that option to just get off the field and then come back in later is really really nice on the alola nine tails we got light clay uh, i would probably say terra fire on this guy just to avoid like any sort of uh just elimination very early on like i know in vgc mm -hmm. incineroar just hitting you with a flare blitz off the rip is kind of a pain stuff like that uh another option instead of the light clay uh would be covert cloak to avoid the fake out okay um yeah. that would be really nice that way you're insured your aurora veil goes up if they don't have a way to like counter the weather or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. this thing's super fast so i did throw icy wind on there so that way you can uh get some speed control in that regard um, in case you, ha you know, your bundles off the field, you can get something else in and start doing some damage. Moonblast here just for a little bit of chip and then, uh, the option for protect. Uh, Heatran is really awesome. You, you shouted this out when you were talking about the lineup. Heatran's yeah. fantastic. The fire steel is really good and Terra is just the best thing to ever happen to Heatran because of that four times weakness. Being able to get away from that is awesome. Uh, so Terra Fairy is really popular on it, especially because there's a lot of fighting types in the meta, or at least in VGC there is with like Urshifu and stuff like that. So being able right. to Terra Blast that stuff, mm -hmm. really powerful with the Assault Vest. Uh, Flash Fire is really good. Obviously, you're running Ice Team, so fire types of problems. So being able to swap in on that, really, really solid. You got Heat Wave with Flash Cannon, Earth Power, and then Terra Blast just Ooh, to I like have a lot, a lot of coverage, a lot of options. Venusaur is the interesting one. I just kind of went with a more offensive Venusaur set. I didn't really mess with uh, anything too crazy. Um, mm -hmm. I went also less speed and more bulk. Uh, I put a lot more into the HP on this thing, uh, mainly because of the fact that I didn't feel like we needed to outspeed a ton of stuff, mainly because the idea is you get Aurora Veil up and you're able to start doing uh, some damage yeah. behind the screens. So just weather ball here, because you know you are playing in the uh, weather. If they decide to change it on you, you go from having an ice move to uh, whatever weather they the decide to change move. on you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's really cool. Sludge Bomb. Leaf Storm, just kind of basic stuff. I didn't figure we needed Earth Power because we have it on Heat Trance. We got that ground coverage if we need it. Now, Cyclozar is really cool. And my thought process with this set was 
uh it's pretty frail in general having focus ash on it would allow you to be able to get to one hp and then you're fast as can be so you could just go ahead and hit stuff with endeavor and take them to one hp oh yeah <laughs> i love it dude endeavor and, shenanigans man yeah and <laughs> I, I actually ran a lichen rock team uh with that i oh, had okay. focus ash lichen rock on a sand team and I, it was working so well that they would hit the lichen rock and i'd just take one of their sweepers to one hp and it was so fun so that's immediately where my brain went here but, that's awesome. uh, amazing i did think you know uh citrus berry could be a good option instead though and then swap out like uh endeavor for uh rapid spin or something just for speed and then you could do uh mainly because the shed tail will break the focus ash if you're deciding to keep that in mm -hmm. uh you will be able to get bundle in behind the substitute which i think would be really cool as a lead with like Ooh. uh cyclozar and low the nine tails get the aurora veil down and then swap in uh for bundle yeah yeah uh this one is terror ghost just so you can avoid the fake out so you're guaranteed to get your uh guaranteed to get your shed tail off and then this is the, you had some weird speed tiers here so i just kind of threw hatterene on there uh just as an option maybe they had you know some uh faster stuff maybe they were going for tailwind or something uh you have a trick room option because you do like i said i didn't invest a ton of speed into a lot of these guys uh so with like venusaur and heat ran having that option to go trick room if they decide to go fast and then having a big hitter like hatterene on that with uh magic bounce really really solid yeah that's gonna be great Oh, dude, I'm really excited for this. I really like the call out too on Cyclozar for breaking swipe. I think that's going to be um, a really good. Oh, man. Cyclozar, like, I guess in my mind, I, I really saw it is just like the shed tail. Like, obviously, that was the main reason why I was like, it's a good, it was kind of my, one of my last picks. Yeah. But it, like seeing kind of like the the breaking swipe advantage there. And then I also love the um, extra support call out for the speed control with a little of nine tails as well, was something I didn't think about before either with Icy Wind. It really opens up a lot of ideas ideas in my mind that i hadn't thought about before <laughs> and i love assault vest heatran because that that's a lot of fun where heatran does the damage but also can take the hit so i love that as well yeah it's it heatran's so fun and it, it's, it's got some other stuff and i'll talk about it when we get to the next variation oh. um back to josh we got rain on this one and oh, this yeah. is why i was Ooh. excited to talk about uh thunderous you got the rain dance pretty standard stuff again here with the uh Tornadoes, Focus Tailwind, Ash. Rain Dance, uh, Taunt, Ghost. With this one, you could opt for a little more bulk to try and keep it alive longer and be able to swap it in and out uh, mm -hmm. to then give yourself the ability to put the Rain back into play or put Tailwind back into play to help out the Thunderous because Thunderous is rocking Choice Scarf with the Volt Absorb, Terra Flying for Terra Blast shenanigans, get that times two stab. But then you have Wild Bolt Storm. So the idea is you outspeed everything. And I think I have this calc. I don't know if you guys had uh shadow rider in the draft or not uh, like my brain right now is vgc wired to calc everything to outspeed shadow rider under <laughs> right yeah <laughs> right right so this guy's calc to outspeed shadow rider um with the That's choice great. scarf under tailwind so that way you're able to uh just spam wild bolt storm and just do tons of damage to both uh pokemon on the other side of the field luckily That's you'll cool. be happy to hear i so i think we uh we, I don't know how the bands worked, Logan, how we did it, but I think they knocked out both the Calyrexes, so we don't need to worry about them. <laughs> yeah, that's, thank goodness. that's probably in everybody's yeah. best interest. <laughs> yeah. It's not nine generations of, of stuff builds up after yeah. it. But yeah, choice, so, I, I, I was thinking Choice Scarf right away with Thunderous Theory, and so I'm glad you're you're shouting that out. Yeah, this. I mean, well, that, this thing is super, super strong, being able to hit stuff, especially with 100% accurate Wild Bolt in the rain with a 20% yeah, chance wild. to paralyze. It's stupid. That's so good. Uh, oh, man, that's it, amazing. And then if you get in a sticky situation, I threw Volt Switch on there just so you can swap out. Um, mm -hmm. As far as the last move goes, I have Focus Blast on there just so you have an option. Like, Ice Types is a problem for you. Uh, being yeah. able to hit, potentially hit the Ice Type with a Focus Blast, I know it's a little scary with that 70% accuracy. <laughs> uh, so, I, honestly, just something like Thunderbolt might just be better on there just so you have that 100% coverage option. Uh, you're going to hit whatever it is. But that was my thought process there. I figured since we're in the rain, bring Mascarada. Yeah. Uh, less likely to see Fire Types pop up. Um, it's going to be able to do... They may be more tempted to bring their Water Types. Is this OTS or you guys is able to look at each other's teams and see the moves and everything we get this we, we have we have like a league hub where we can see their teams but not their builds before the match so okay okay it's like i guess you could say like half ots <laughs> yeah i gotcha i yeah, gotcha yeah. but yeah so they may be tempted to bring water types if they see you going like the rain route so then you have meow to cover that option uh this one's rocking the yeah, overgrow really just terra grass uh focus sash that way if you do get taken down because this thing's so fast normally you're getting that bonus damage with the flower tricks then we Excellent. just have uh pretty standard iron hands again just doing yeah. iron hands stuff what did i do with sableye this time <laughs> will-o-wisp <laughs> nice, uh, i did I use it as an alternate option as your uh rain setter 
So in case Tornadus does go down too early, before you, you Mega that. Evolve, you have Prankster, you can set Rain Dance again to allow the 100% accurate Wild Bolt Storms. Uh, yeah. And then also I threw Quash on there. Uh, in case okay. something was outspeeding your Meowskarata, you were able to Quash it, and then your Meowskarata could move before it and do big damage. Nice. Okay, cool. I was actually going to ask you about Quash on a, on a Sable I set, so that's cool. Yeah, with the Prankster, it's super nice. You can just make stuff go last regardless of a speed tier. If you're losing that speed war, you just Quash it and then have something blow it up. Cool. Nice. I love that. Uh, and then with the Weezing, I went with uh, Sludge Bomb this time. Dropped, didn't bring the clear smog, just figured we go straight for damage. I did throw Misty Surge on there, but um, definitely could go with Levitate here, especially with Iron Hands. Might be tempted to throw Levitate on there and have it as a potential swap in opportunity uh, to take that ground type attack or something to that effect. Right. Uh, flamethrower dazzling gleam just pretty standard stuff on here with the citrus berry i think nice. this is like a really cool team like i like it just shows the power of some like some of these mons especially in this like in the, the gen 9 um like with their buffs and things like that because this is an uberless team and that, that is not like um unheard of in our league but obviously a little bit more rare mm -hmm. because a lot of the times we're not as experienced and so sometimes we rely a lot on that you know that uber power yeah but like seeing seeing the synergy between um first of all those two the two genies and then uh, I really love the shout out for it's a rain team. Yaskarada can thrive here, making yeah. it, you know, such a powerhouse, especially if it gets down, knocked down to that with, with that sash with flower trick. I mean, that's going to be redonkulous amounts of power. Yeah. So Dude, I, I'm I sorry. love that shout out. Yeah, the, the two genies were, were probably my two picks outside of Walking Wake and Meowskarada I was most excited to, to try and play around with. So Yeah, the genies cool. are really cool. I was super excited when I saw both of them on the lineup. Yeah. I was like, oh, there's some stuff to be done here. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, so that's the thing is that, you know, you, you kind of find what, what works and then by no means like, yeah, you're not like... Uh, and we also get like ads and drops as well. So like, it, you know, yeah, we can yeah. even... Like all the remaining Pokemon that didn't get drafted, there's still a massive pool. So like if I'm playing and I'm like... Okay, I need some more variation. Chansey's obviously some dead weight here. We're just gonna cut. <laughs> we're just gonna cut Chansey and yeah. find something else that might synergize, or at least mix things up a little bit more than you know you have that option down yeah. the line as well. Like we, you know, so we, let's uh, see Logan's. So Logan's team two is very similar to the first variation. Just we got the Lola Nine Tails doing the exact same stuff as before. The big change with this was I swapped the Ubers. We got okay. Kyron Black on this one, uh, and this one's rocking loaded dice. So nice. you've got the Ooh, Icicle Spear. I love that. Uh, so that way you can hit, you know, four to five times every time uh, and then scale shot as well. So you're going to boost the speed to get the speed control yep. while you're doing big dragon damage as well. With the Aurora Veil and with the ice uh, benefit, uh, taking a minus one in your speed, well, in your defense, isn't that big a deal, right? Yeah. yeah. You got the screens, you got the buff from the snow. Uh, it's not going to be hurting you that bad. So I thought this was a fun set and then just Fusion Bolt for some coverage options with Protect. The one thing I wanted to highlight with uh heatran here was I, a fun thing that you could do mainly on the bundle variation we talked about before was like throw magma storm on this thing i was gonna so, ask about magma storm yeah yeah throw magma storm on there and then anything oh, yeah, 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 that yeah. wants to swap out of a blizzard spam can't swap out of a blizzard spam anymore Ooh. oh dude Ooh. so or that anything switches in too yeah like, anything that, that be... they want to rotate maybe and you just hit them with the magma storm obviously there's a 75 percent accuracy crap but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we that. might play with yeah. it we might play with it <laughs> yeah That's it's awesome, dude. just a fun variation but i think with this team specifically with the cyclozar i think the fun thing would be with how bulky kyron black is getting that shed tail up and letting kyron black come in and then just start clicking you know all those multi-hit moves is really mm -hmm. really powerful yeah, Dude, you know, and I love that because that breaks his ashes. That does that does all kinds of shenanigans. Yeah. Dude, Kyrian Black's attack is... I always forget how high it is. It's insane. Isn't it's it like crazy. One, 170. Like one, 170, dude. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I, I know Ky I know Kyrian White's really good, but I don't think that was even... I think that was another one that was just <laughs> docks right off the bat. So. Kyrian White is really good. It's Kyrian so good. Kyrian really good, yeah. But yeah. that's cool. Kyrian Black's one I haven't messed with as much. And I, I was actually... I, I only know this because I was making a video today about talking about the worst restricted Pokemon we could use in uh, Reg G. And Kyrian Black <laughs> made the list. And, <laughs> and it's and I was looking at it and I'm like, you know, what what is the problem with this thing? Because it has such a high attack stat. And I'm like, well, you just throw clear amulet on it. You can avoid Incineroar. I'm like, where's the issue? And I typed in ice on the moves. And the only ice stab it gets outside of Icicle okay. Spear is Ice Fang. Is Ice Fang? I thought I got more. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I got a little bit more than that, but that's okay because I think the I, I liked I liked where you put it here, um, with the Icicle Spear. And yeah. I've also thought because it does still have a pretty re decent uh, special attack. I think mm -hmm. does does this one get freeze dry as well? Um, or... it might. It does. Yeah. 
because I was thinking that could be that could also be an option because I mean just having that uh, not not for like super like that'd be like niche use cases yeah yeah uh, but like I could also see kind of having some some backup there but that is that is a little disappointing to, to I didn't realize that but it's also like I icicle spear can be fun we'll have fun with loaded dice and yeah we'll, we'll make it yeah work. I, I, loaded dice is definitely a fun way to play it I actually have a video coming out with Kyron cool. Black that has loaded oh, okay, dice so. Kyron Black yeah okay oh, that's gonna be sick. Dude, I was wondering the same thing because, like, I was looking at the move sets. I'm just like, is it a stat thing? But I'm like, no, it's just basically swapping the physical and special stats. Everything else is the same, same speed tier, same, mm -hmm. same bulk, and everything. Yeah. It's oh, HP wise, and but yeah, I mean that makes sense. The the, the moves are kind of important as well as the yeah, stats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, everything else on this team is pretty much doing the same thing it was on the right. other. Uh, but I did throw together something a little a little spicy. Like I said, I had a Mew idea. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to see this, dude. Uh, for Logan's lineup. So I, I went with a, like a hard trick room mode. And this one has Rotom instead of the Ninetales. Rotom, okay. pretty slow naturally. Able to bring it in here with like Hydro Pump, Thunderbolt, Will-O-Wisp, Volt Switch. Just be annoying. And then Terra Electric just to maximize your damage because, you know, you, you already have Levitate. You don't have to worry about the ground weakness. Yeah. So just do as much damage as you possibly can and then maybe get a couple burns here and there for some fun. The Spice really comes in the form of the Mew and the Hatterene. So this one has Trick Room, Expanding Force, Dazzling Gleam, and Protect. Ooh, uh, with cool. the life orb and the magic bounce and the idea is that we're using Mew because it could learn everything under the sun to set the psychic terrain for you <laughs> <laughs> oh man set the psychic terrain uh, it's got covert cloak so they can't fake you out so the turn one you just set that and then go for a uh, trick room on Hatterene Get your psychic terrain down. You got helping hand here to just spam, uh, expanding force, helping hand and stuff. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen a whole lot of that, but it does stupid yes. damage. It, it's yeah. a stupid yeah. damage multiplier. Threw psychic on there just so you had some coverage on Mew itself so it could do some damage, especially with the psychic terrain down that's going to do a fair bit of damage. And then it has trick room itself. So that way, uh, the rest Ooh. of the team, which I didn't put any speed investment into, all these guys are like, uh, minus Very speed slow. natures so that way they can kind of thrive in that environment nice. and then uh, Kyron Black just as the uber slot doing the same thing as it was on the other team uh, but being a relatively slow Pokemon it, on its own as as far as ubers go anyway yeah. being able to just dish out some damage early maybe get some uh, early chip off uh, especially if you're using like scale shot just blow some stuff up uh, right. get the minus defense and kind of let this thing get out the way and then let other stuff come in to clean up the end game that was kind of my thought process with this particular uh uber pick i think i think it's super fun and like i've never piloted a, like a trick room before i mean not because we've done we've done mostly singles and so yeah yeah i, I remember i remember my biggest um we i did i did try to get some trick room shenanigans up in like the second season of our it was still singles but that's when mm -hmm. i learned that trick room is negative seven priority yes um, <laughs> and so yeah, uh, yeah. And I, and I lost because of that, uh, because I, but I was faster than my opponent. Um, and, and anyway, I, I learned, I learned, I got hit twice in a row because of that, but I, I learned that. And so it's like, this is going to be fun. I could do some redemption with trick room because I haven't really touched it since because I was like, I don't know how to do it, but this, this will be a lot of fun. And I think this could be really, really interesting. We'll have to, we'll have to maybe send you a re so, so we, we did, uh, we did do a double season, um, before, like we said, mm -hmm. but, um, we're, I mean, still, so relatively, um, pretty pretty raw and rookie-ish on it so it'd be fun to sit, maybe send you uh, some replays of early in the year and then some of later in the year and see if we uh see if we got better see the growth better. yeah <laughs> you, can, you can grade us and everything but i'm just excited for uh maybe somebody's not expecting it now that we're seeing stuff like like covert cloak for example that has a lot more use because fake out is a lot more prevalent look i'm just waiting for someone to fake out mew and then it doesn't flinch and they're like wait <laughs> did, did i miss something or something like that and they just <laughs> yeah totally messes them up so that's fun i'm excited this is great what other sort of like general um team building principles do you feel like because obviously this is a pretty like you know wonky niche kind of for fun yeah, format yeah. that we do but are there any general team building principles or insights that that you sort of look for like do you look for weather do you look for like hey i'm gonna start grouping by speed tiers and find stuff that works together like that do i have like trick room on the table do i have a held item that's really gonna increase the wall breaking potential of my team what, what are you looking for uh typically i try to find how two pokemon can work together best i just try to look for the things that like benefit each other like with the uh, one team uh with thunderous how i was like okay so I have right. these two, they obviously benefit each other, but these Meowskarata being on the rain team obviously is going to benefit one another because, you know, they're either bringing water types or they're uh, trying to uh, 
they're less likely to bring the fire types. That would be a problem for Miascarada to deal with. So that's kind of where my brain is as far as team building goes. I like to try and have a core if possible. Like I brought up the fire, water, grass uh, with yeah. Bundle, Heatran, and Venusaur. Just having those safe switch options is really key. So we also got the Fairy Steel Dragon core as well. Like yeah, yeah. Is a, is a side thing in there too, which is really nice because it's yeah. just all the options. Yeah, you've got just a ton of, I, I usually like to, that's where my brain goes when I'm, I start with the team is like, how can I fit some sort of rotational core? Because I play a lot of balance just because it's it's comfy. Uh, being able to yeah. rotate in and just take hits for people and just be annoying in that way mm -hmm. is really nice. So that's kind of where my brain immediately jumps to. But I do like to throw, you know, the, the tailwind stuff onto a team every once in a while or, you know, a trick room variation. So that's why this team came to mind. And I, it's goofy, but it could be really fun. <laughs> nice, I, I definitely have to try it, man. I, th I think it's going to be really <laughs> exciting to kind of show our friends, um, you know, what a what a pro VGC builder c can actually build out. How do you look for holes in your team to be able to fix fix any issues that you're finding? I think the biggest thing is just looking at the type advantages that you have like this team in particular like you've got like multiple water types you've got uh multiple ice types uh mm -hmm. we've got multiple psychic types uh multiple dragons so really it just comes down to uh trying to figure out where you have like your weaknesses are doubling up and where you can kind of swap in other pokemon to cover those weaknesses so that way when you yeah. are in a battle you have those safe switches that you can go to if necessary Okay, cool. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. It's just kind of making sure the synergy's there. I like yeah. that. And then we also like we also have the terror typing and where we can kind of figure out where yeah, that yeah. can that can play come into play as well. This is such a blast. And like I honestly just thanks again so much for looking yeah, at no, this. Yeah, no, thanks and, for having me. It was fun. Dope. Dude, I, I'm excited to to have Terra into because I'll I'll be watching your videos. And uh, the cool thing with Terra, I mean, I, it, again, it's different with VGC with the four v four and it's fast yeah. pace and everything. But there are some times where you're like, dude, we're gonna Terra turn one. <laughs> and it's just right off the bat it's it's, it's yeah. out there and then or but then sometimes your win con it'll, it'll wait a little bit they'll tear yeah, yeah. it's like hey do they have that in their back pocket still they do okay what might they be doing it's more, it's more likely to be this we can be on the lookout mm -hmm. for that and mm -hmm. then as soon as they tear it's like oh now there's blood in the water because now we know they're they, they're you know they yeah they use their little last trump card and you can commit yours later on and that's your win yeah. con so yeah no we we appreciate it is but is there anything that you want to plug or anything that you want to have people keep an eye on on, on your side of things i'm at nico gaming at everything uh, posting nearly daily Pokemon content if I get busy at work yeah. or something uh, doesn't come out but uh, yeah a lot of Pokemon VGC stuff on Nico Gaming same on Twitter on TikTok I guess that's getting banned I don't know what's going on there <laughs> <Seriously>. <laughs> who knows <laughs> uh, but yeah that's where you can find me uh, doing a lot of VGC battles doing uh, a lot of meta stuff I got more into meta analysis uh, with the new format doing a lot of that stuff talking about the Pokemon that are popping yeah. off the battle videos always take a dip for VGC, as the format goes on, people get less interested, interest falls off. But uh, I found the hardcore players really do stick around for the meta analysis stuff. So we're doing for a lot sure. more of that mm -hmm. here in this uh, regulation. So if that's your jam, come over, hang out, Just send me a rental team. I'll play it on the channel. <laughs> Sick, man. That's awesome. I love it, man. Sweet. Well, thanks again for joining us. Tell everybody to shout out Nico for all the stuff that he does. We really pre appreciate you allowing us to kind of pick your brain on kind of what this looks like. This is kind of a cool because, you know, Josh and I, we get to know a lot of people from a different from the different parts of the Pokemon space. And so we were able to this is kind of a fun mesh of the draft area and also the vgc in some ways as well and and so being able to kind of see those those skills slip over and really be able to i mean but you blew my mind um with some of these little things where i'm like okay that makes so much more sense than what i was originally thinking and like building certain bonds so i just want to give you a shout out again everybody please go follow nico give him sh uh, some support just want to give you a shout out again nico thank yeah, you th thank you guys for having me this is always so much fun just sit and talk <laughs> pokemon man it's a good time yeah it's, it's all about here man so well appreciate it well until next time we'll catch everyone out this is uh josh logan and nico with skill link signing out Thanks. see you guys